Now we're gonna be moving into parallel lines and the transversal. So what does that mean? We're gonna have two parallel lines. So I'm gonna have two lines and I'm gonna emphasize their parallel by drawing the same amount of arrows. I can do one arrow or two arrows on each line just to emphasize they are parallel. And then a transversal, it's a line that crosses the my parallel lines. Anyway, so let me just go here. Anyway, so parallel lines in a transversal. Now, one thing let me do is really quick. Let me come up with values. There's eight corners, right? You guys see there's eight corners created. And we believe that if I give you one corner, one angle, you should be able to figure out how big all the angles are. As an example. Let's say I give you this angle is 100. Based on, on linear pair, you should be able to figure out that that's 80 because those two angles adjacent, those two adjacent angles are a linear pair, so they add up to 180. Then you can also figure out that this is 100 because those two adjacent angles are, are um, supplementary, they add up to 180. I know the thing you could have seen is that there's an X form, vertical angle theorem, tells me opposite angles are equal. And then you should be able to figure out this is 80 as well, right? When there's an X form, opposite angles are equal. So interesting part on that, you were able to find four corners given just one. Now the interesting part, because these two angles, these two lines are parallel, let me copy the angles that way I see them on the, on the top intersection, right? Where the two lines intersect. Let me copy in the same way here at the bottom. This is 80 and this is 100. So based on one angle, you were able to figure out how much all of them were. So that's what we're gonna do with parallel lines in a transversal. Now, interesting part is that they will have names. For today, I'm gonna to be dealing with alternate interior and alternate exterior. Okay, so what does this mean? Let me just write it down what I just said. Alternate. interior and alternate exterior. Okay, so for alternate interior, alternate exterior, I'm gonna choose two angles. And one of them is gonna be from the top intersection, one of them is gonna be from the bottom intersection. Alternate means one of the angles that I choose is going to be on the left side of the transversal and the other angle is going to be on the right side of the transversal. So that's what alternate means. One on the left side of the transversal, one on the right side of the transversal. Interior, you see the parallel lines? Interior means inside the parallel lines. Exterior means outside of the parallel lines. So for example, alternate interior I'll be thinking of my two parallel lines with a transversal. I'm going to choose one angle from the left of the transversal, one angle from the right, but both of them are interior. So I could choose these two angles. Notice how they're inside the parallel lines. One of my angles is on the left side of the transversal, the other one on the right side of the transversal. And then alternate exterior, let me think of my two parallel lines. Let me think of my transversal. So alternate, again, means one of them on the left side of the transversal, one of them on the, on the right side of the transversal. But exterior means outside of the parallel lines. So I could choose those two. Now, based on the table that we picked here, because look, alternate interior, I could choose these two angles. Notice how alternate interior, the number is the same thing. What if I choose alternate exterior? Ah, they're gonna be equal as well. So here, when I'm asking you to solve for X, alternate interior or alternate exterior, you're gonna let these two angles equal each other. Again, you look at the sample that I did, alternate interior, you see how I got 80 and 80? Or I could have chose 100 with 100. As long as I choose one angle from the left, one angle from the right of the transversal, 
but both of them in between the parallel lines and both of them from different intersections. Okay, so alternate interior, they equal each other. The instructions here are solve for x. So I'm just going to say 65 is equal to x plus 70. Separate them through the equal sign to get the x by itself. This plus 70, let me move it over as a minus 70. So I get that negative 5 is equal to x. The instruction says solve for x. What's the value of x? Negative 5. Not too bad. Looking at question number 20, I see these two are alternate interior because different sides of the transversal, both of them inside, so they must be equal to each other. So 60 is equal to 20 times x. Let me divide both sides by 20. So I get 3 is equal to x. Not bad. Let's take a look at number 21. Now these side, these angles, one of them is on the left side of the transversal, one of them is on the right side of the transversal, and uh, they're both outside of the parallel lines. So this is an example of alternate exterior. But alternate exterior, they're still equal to each other. So I'm still going to go 13x plus 9 is equal to 100. Let me solve for x. My plus 9, let me move it over. So I have that 13x is equal to 91. The Bible size by 13. So I get that x is equal to 7. Pretty cool. Let's take a look at number 22. Okay, so one angle is on the left side of the transversal, one angle is on the right side of the transversal. So that's an alternate. They're both outside of the parallel line. So that's an alternate exterior. So that means they're equal to each other as well. So I'm gonna go six X minus six. It's equal to four X plus 16. Let me separate it through the equal sign. I remember how to solve from algebra one. How do we solve when there's X on both sides of the equal sign? We'll move them, move one of them to combine like terms. My goal here is to combine like terms. Trying to avoid negatives if possible, I'm going to move the smallest x. So 4x, I'm going to move it to the left as a minus 4x. And then this minus 6, I'm going to move it to the right as a plus 6. Notice I have letters on one side and then just numbers on the other side. So separate like terms. Don't forget to switch the sign whenever you move it from one side to the other. That's it. Looking on the left side, 6 minus 4, right? 6x minus 4, that gives me 2x. On the right side, 16 plus 6, that's 22. Let me divide by the number in front of x. And when I get x is equal to 11. Now, number 23 and 24, I'm going to include lines that have nothing to do with your with your angles. Focus on um, the angles for the lines that I'm using are these lines. There's an extra line in there that has nothing to do with my angles. So I'm really looking at here. So matter of fact, let me highlight in green my transversal. So you guys see my yellow lines are my parallel lines and my green is my transversal. I see their opposite sides. So one of them is on the left side of the transversal. One of the other angles on the right side of the transversal. So that makes it alternate. They're outside of my parallel lines. So I'm going to call this alternate exterior. And for alternate exterior, I know they equal each other. So I'm just going to go 7x plus 7 is equal to 6x plus 16. And I want to combine like terms. So let me move the minus 6x to the left. And then this plus 7, let me move it over as a minus 7. Don't forget to switch the signs. 7x minus 6x. So 7 minus 6 is 1x. 16 minus 7 is 9. x equals 9. Not too hard. Now here for number 24, 
let me emphasize my parallel lines that I'm using. I'm going to be using this line with this line. And then my transversal is going to be this one. So I see I'm looking at these two angles. OK, so they are outside of my parallel lines. And they're both opposite sides of the transversal. So this is what we call alternate exterior. So I know they equal each other. 45x is equal to 44x plus 3. Let me move this 44x over. And don't forget to switch the sign. So I get that 1x is equal to 3. 